Now, this is the sterile bone marrow tray, bone marrow aspiration tray. So, this is very, very, very important. Now, those of you who have performed the procedure, you will know what is the importance of all this sterile bone marrow aspiration tray. So, if you see over here, first of first, this is the local anesthesia xylocaine that we take and this is the, the, the 5 cc syringe, okay. Usually a 2cc syringe can also work. This is taken, you know, for giving the local anesthesia to the patient. The first thing, to give the local anesthesia to the patient, okay. Now, always remember when you are doing this procedure, this is the bone marrow aspiration needle. Now, you tell me, look at this guard, how it is, which needle it is, okay. Now, this is the bone marrow aspiration needle as you can see and this is mainly the bone marrow biopsy needle but it can also be used for aspiration in case the patient is very fat. Okay, now this is a syringe, a 10 ml syringe, okay, which is very important, okay, because when you want to aspirate the bone marrow content, you use this for aspirating, okay, and this is basically before you perform any aspiration procedure, before you insert the needle, you have to make a small incision, just you have to go and prick, okay, little bit at the site of anesthesia only, you have to prick with this. So, all these things that you see in this sterile bone marrow tray, they are useful, they are used for performing the procedure. So, you should know, those of you who are performing the procedure regularly will understand the importance of this trick. Now, you perform, now you are going to insert the needle and when you are going to, you know, enter the area, okay, where is the periosteum, okay, then the patient will have a sharp pain. And then with a rotating movement, you should proceed inside the periosteum till Till you have to go little bit inside, you have to cross the cortex and enter the cancellous spongy bone because you want to aspirate the content and what is going to happen that only when the needle is fixed by its own that you can now proceed with aspirating. Now when you first aspirate to make the slide, this is a lot of content, okay, this is not the uh, ideal. You have to take very small 0.5 to 1 ml of aspirate should be taken initially for preparation. Why? Why? Why we will take less amount? Because we do not want any dilution. Because if you take more content, then the content will become diluted. So, to prevent dilution, we take very little. The initial amount that is taken, it is used for making multiple. So, first of all, this is a bone marrow biopsy actually. And what is this? Yes, this is a bony trabeculi. This is a bony trabi. It is the bony trabeculi. This is again another bony trabeculi. This is an, uh, another bony trabeculi. This is again another bony trabeculi. Now, in between the bony trabeculi, if you see, in between the bony trabeculi, you have the hematopoietic stem cells. Okay. Not only that, you have the bone marrow fat as well. This is the fat, and this is this in between the fat tissue that is uh, we are having the hematopoietic cells. Okay, or the hematopoietic tissue. Okay, so very importantly, what did I say that in between the bony trabeculi, so in the central part, so just let me show you in the central part of this, just let me show you, this is the central part over here, okay, so in the central part, erythroid precursors along with that, you will see the megakaryocytes also and the vascular sinusoids, all of these three things are present centrally. If you see, there is one very big cell, not that much, uh, you know, Clear in this diagram, over here also one very big cell you can see. These are the megakaryocytes which are present centrally very close to the vascular sinusoids. So, the erythroid precursors, megakaryocytes and the vascular sinusoids, they are present at the center of the bone, okay, in between the bony trabeculae, okay. Whereas, just adjacent to the bony trabeculae, so this is the bony trabeculae. So, just adjacent or very close to the bony trabeculae, over here more of them is the fat tissue. But basically, just very close to the bony trabeculae, you see immature granulocyte precursor. And as you move towards the center, you will find more mature granulocyte. So, this is the basic arrangement of the hematopoietic cells inside the bone marrow. Okay. So, this is what I wanted to show you. Myself, Dr. Gibran Amal presents to you Simply Pathology. And today, we are back with a very important lecture. Today, we are going to discuss a very, very important topic, which is not only important for the postgraduate residents, but they are also very important for the undergraduates. And it, as it is one of the competencies, uh, I think it is competency 17.2 under the National Medical Council. And along with that, this topic is the most important for all the postgraduate residents whether they are MD or DNB, okay, for postgraduate residents of pathology because we are going to discuss this procedure in details. 
So this is the part one of bone marrow study wherein we are going to discuss mainly about the bone marrow aspiration. Okay, and in the next video, we are going to discuss in details about bone marrow biopsy. So let us begin today's topic of discussion without wasting any more time. So if you see the bone marrow, we all know that the bone marrow, it is the site of hematopoiesis in the postnatal life. Now there are two types of marrow as we already know. There is a red marrow which is the active marrow and then there is a yellow marrow. So red marrow, as I said, they uh, refer to the active hematopoietic tissue while fatty tissue comprises the yellow or the inactive marrow. The average volume of bone marrow combining both the red and the yellow bone marrow in an adult is 3 to 4 liter or 3000 to 4000 ml. The red or active marrow constitutes 1500 ml. The hematopoietic cells, they are present as cords between the vascular sinusoids and they are supported by a framework of branching process of fibroblast and reticulin fiber. Now remember, inside the bone marrow, what is the arrangement of the different kinds of cells? I will also show you with the help of diagram. So the erythroid precursors, if you see, they are present as clusters, that is as islands and they are closely associated with centrally placed sinusoids. An erythroid island consists of centrally placed macrophage around which the erythroid precursors are concentrically arranged. So this is called as an erythron and I have already shown this diagram to you in my video on normal hematopoiesis, the link of which is given in the description box. Now the early granulocyte precursors, they are located very close to the bony trabeculae, whereas the more mature granulocytes are located more centrally between the adjacent trabeculae. Now the megakaryocytes, which are the largest of the hematopoietic cells, are closely opposed to the walls of the sinusoids. Again, these are present centrally. So let me just show you with the help of this diagram so that you have a basic idea that what is the location of different types of hematopoietic stem cells. So first of all, this is a bone marrow biopsy actually. And what is this? Yes, this is a bony trabeculae. This is a bony trabeculae. It is a bony trabeculae. This is again another bony trabeculae. This is an, uh, another bony trabeculae. This is again another bony trabeculae. Now, in between the bony trabeculae, if you see, in between the bony trabeculae, you have the hematopoietic stem cells. Okay. Not only that, you have the bone marrow fat as well. This is the fat and this is this in between the fat tissue that is uh, we are having the hematopoietic cells. Okay. Or the hematopoietic tissue. Okay, so very importantly, what did I say that in between the bony trabeculae, so in the central part, so just let me show you in the central part of this, just let me show you, this is the central part over here. Okay, so in the central part, erythroid precursors along with that, you will see the megakaryocytes also and the vascular sinusoids, all of these three things are present centrally. If you see, there is one very big cell, not that much, uh, you know, Clear in this diagram, over here also one very big cell you can see. These are the megakaryocytes which are present centrally very close to the vascular sinusoids. So the erythroid precursors, megakaryocytes and the vascular sinusoids, they are present at the center of the bone, okay, in between the bony trabeculae, okay. Whereas just adjacent to the bony trabeculae, so this is the bony trabeculae. So just adjacent or very close to the bony trabeculae, over here more of them is the fat tissue. But basically, just very close to the bony trabeculae, you see immature granulocyte precursor. And as you move towards the center, you will find more mature granulocytes. So this is the basic arrangement of the hematopoietic cells inside the bone marrow. Okay. So this is what I wanted to show you. So hematopoiesis, it occurs extravascularly in between the interconnecting marrow sinusoids. After development, the mature blood cells will leave the bone marrow and they enter the circulation by passing through or in between the endothelial cells of the sinusoids. So what they are just trying to say that whatever active cells, they are getting synthesized in this bone marrow. Okay. So once the blood cells becomes mature, they leave the bone marrow via the centrally placed vascular sinusoids. This is what they are trying to say. Now, the amount of fatty tissue depends on the activity of the hematopoietic cells. Now, remember the proportion of fat cells or the proportion of yellow marrow, they are going to increase with advancing age with corresponding decrease in the red marrow or the actively synthesizing hematopoietic tissue. Now, remember the macrophage in the bone marrow, they serve various functions like synthesis of hematopoietic growth factors, inhibitory substances, 
phagocytosis of the senescent red cells and also transport of iron to the erythroblast in the form of erythron. Now the stromal cells of the bone marrow, they are nothing but the fibroblast, fat cells, macrophages, endothelial cells, all these are helping to form what is called as the bone marrow microenvironment which is very essential for the normal hematopoiesis. Okay, even the bone marrow microenvironment is a very important long answer question for the postgraduate students. Now remember, during infancy and early childhood, hematopoiesis is occurring in almost all the bones of the body. Okay, by late adulthood, hematopoiesis becomes mainly restricted to the flat bones like the sternum, ribs, iliac bones, vertebra and the proximal end of the long bone. So, in adults, okay, these are the active sites of hematopoiesis, okay. Now, the other sites of red marrow are transformed into yellow marrow, okay. So, in adults, so when you are a child, almost the entire bone, the entire body bone that is available is synthesizing your blood cells. But as you are growing, as you become an adult, Okay, only the flat bones are going to synthesize and the rest of the sites they get converted into yellow marrow that is they contain more fat. However, remember whenever there is an increased demand for the blood cells, the blood cell production can resume even in the yellow marrow. In extremely severe cases that is in case of chronic hemolytic anemia, resumption of hematopoiesis will occur in extra medullary uh, you know, tissues like the liver and the spleen. Okay, that can also occur. Now remember in this particular topic, okay, in this series, we are going to discuss two very important techniques of bone marrow study. One is the bone marrow aspiration, wherein we are just going to aspirate the bone marrow content and we are going to, to study the same under the microscope. Whereas in a biopsy, we take a piece of the tissue of the bone. We take a piece of bone, then we process it, it uh, you know, uh, like a normal histopathology processing and as a histopathological slide, we will examine that under the microscope. In bone marrow aspiration, the bone marrow fluid is obtained by a special needle and a syringe. The smears from this material is prepared on a glass slide. It is stained and examined under the microscope. Whereas in bone marrow trifine biopsy, also called as a core biopsy, a small tissue piece of bone marrow is removed with a special needle. They are processed to obtain histological sections and then they are examined. Now, before performing the bone marrow aspiration or biopsy, one should assess the clinical features, what, what the treatment the patient has received and the relevant laboratory test results that is there. So, always remember before you perform a bone marrow, before you even give a date for the bone marrow, you have to first see whether this patient is fit to undergo a bone marrow, whether there are any, you know, uh, any relevant indications to perform a bone marrow study or not. Just anyone is sending you a patient for a bone marrow study, you shouldn't perform. You have to see why you are performing. If there is any kind of a cytopenia, if there is any suspicion of an acute leukemia, if the spleen and liver is enlarged in that particular patient. So, you have to see all these features, okay. If any hemolytic picture is there in the bone marrow, uh, in the peripheral blood smear, so that is why they are, uh, they want to study if there is any erythroid hyperplasia which is seen in the bone marrow, if there is reduced platelet count or thrombocytopenia. So, there are many indications which we will discuss in the later half of the video. Now, based on the above data, if appropriate indication exists, the examination of the bone marrow is carried out and findings are correlated to arrive at a final diagnosis, okay. So, this is just I am trying to show you, this is how the bone marrow aspiration looks like. So, over here from the posterior superior iliac spine, you can see the bone marrow material is aspirated and from the same you are going to prepare smears. This is the bone marrow aspiration study, okay. On the other hand, this is the bone marrow biopsy. So, you are uh, putting a biopsy gun inside which is Jamshiri's needle and then you are taking a piece of the bone tissue. So, this is the tissue that you are taking. You are making an imprint over here and then you are taking a over here in a formalin, 10% uh, formalin solution over here to fix this and to give the particular tissue for uh, tissue processing. Okay. So, this is the refined biopsy when you take a piece of the bone marrow tissue. Okay. So, today we are going to read first about the bone marrow aspiration in detail. So, this is the first half of today's lecture. This is the part 1 that we are going to read in today's lecture. Okay. We are going to read the part 1 of this video. So, what are the indications of bone marrow aspiration? When is it that you are going to perform the aspiration study? So, whenever you are having any kind of unexplained cytopenia, that means, if the cause of cytopenia is not apparent from the investigations and clinical details, bone marrow examination is indicated. 
So if there is anemia, leukopenia or thrombocytopenia. So number one, to distinguish among the causes of microcytic hypochromic anemia. So what are the causes? It is the CETA. Okay, sideroblastic anemia, iron deficiency anemia, thalassemia minor, anemia of chronic disease. Mainly to differentiate iron deficiency from chronic disease, bone marrow examination can be done to assess the storage iron. I will speak about how you assess the storage iron, which stains you are doing, what is the method, what is the grading of the iron, everything I will discuss. Okay, to identify ring sideroblast, okay, if we are suspecting sideroblastic anemia or even in case of myelodysplastic syndrome. Now, in cases of leukopenia or mainly in case of thrombocytopenia. Now, in thrombocytopenia, if the platelet count is less, then we want to perform a bone marrow examination to see whether really the bone marrow is not synthesizing the platelets or the bone marrow is adequately synthesizing and there is a peripheral destruction of the platelets. Okay, So, differentiate peripheral destruction of platelets from deficient production. Then thirdly, we are having in the presence of isolated thrombocytopenia. So, if you are suspecting ITP, okay, in that case, marrow examination is important to rule out any underlying hematological disorder or a deficient platelet production. Why? Because ITP is idiopathic. There is no such cause. Okay, so ITP is idiopathic. So, we want to rule out any other cause for thrombocytopenia. That is why to establish the diagnosis of ITP, we want to, uh, to rule out other causes. Then the second, so first was unexplained cytopenia, then unexplained polycythemia, okay, increased, uh, you know, RBC count, increased RBC density, PCV, polycythemia, leukocytosis and thrombocytosis. Now, over here, there were cytopenias, over here, there's increased count also is not good. So, to, to you know, unexplained polycythemia, leukocytosis or thrombocytosis also warrants bone marrow aspiration study. Evaluation of iron stores in a case of iron deficiency anemia versus AOCD, we have already seen over here. Not only that, bone marrow iron uh, stores, uh, you know, storage study is the gold standard investigation for establishing the diagnosis of iron deficiency anemia. Then suspected acute leukemia, when you are suspecting acute leukemia, so aspiration study is important for diagnosis, immunophenotyping, cytogenetic analysis to detect any remission, subleukemic or aleukemic leukemia. Then suspected myelodysplastic syndrome. So, if you are examining a peripheral blood smear and you see a lot of dysplastic changes in the cell lineages. So, in that case, we want to carry out and we want to see whether the similar changes are present in the bone as well, in the bone marrow as well. So, when you are suspecting MDS or myelodysplastic syndrome, suspected myeloproliferative syndromes like CML, PV, ET, MF, suspected plasma cell disorders like multiple myeloma, Suspected chronic lymphoid leukemias like your CLL, hairy cell leukemia, pro-lymphocytic leukemia. Investigation of pyroxia of unknown origin. So, in that case, you collect the blood sample for blood culture actually. Suspected storage disorders like Gaucher's disease, neiman picks disease. Suspected infections like miliary tuberculosis, Kala Azar. For ancillary investigation to carry out, uh, you know, flow cytometry, cytogenetic analysis, we need to have material and material from the bone marrow. They are better as compared to the peripheral blood for carrying out these ancillary investigations to monitor the response to therapy and to assess any kind of remission or relapse. That is why we, after giving the treatment, we are also carrying out this particular investigation. Now, what are the indications of bone marrow biopsy? When will you carry out a bone marrow biopsy? So, let us see. When repeated uh, aspiration does not yield any material. So, that is called as a dry tap. So, in which condition do you suspect this? Now, it can occur. Most commonly, it occurs because of an inexperienced um, pathologist or an inexperienced clinician who is doing it for the first or the second time. Okay. So, in that case, if there is any faulty technique, number one. Fibrosis. If there is a fibrosis in the bone marrow, like primary myelofibrosis, Hodgkin's lymphoma, Hairy cell leukemia or a packed marrow, when a marrow is packed completely because of hypercellularity, because of acute leukemia, okay. When you suspect aplastic anemia, in that case, you should always carry a bone marrow biopsy also because there is a high chance that the marrow will be very dilute or material will not be aspirated. Suspected myelofibrosis, when you are suspecting a focal lesion, so you might miss that focal lesion might not come. So, it is much better to take a bone marrow biopsy in focal lesions like a granuloma, metastatic deposit or an infiltrate or spilling by a lymphoma. Suspected hairy cell leukemia, suspected bone disorder, 
okay suspected or, or for the staging of a lymphoma how it is helping in the staging of lymphoma we will see in the next video wherein we will discuss bone marrow biopsy in details now what are the contraindications to carry out any of these investigations very important if the patient is having any bleeding disorder like hemophilia or any other coagulation disorder so that is a very important contraindication number two local site infection if there is an infection in the local site you shouldn't carry this procedure and thirdly, if the patient is saying, no, I don't wish that you proceed with this. So, even if the patient party is saying, and if the patient is not willing for the procedure, you cannot. Okay, it is against the patient's rights. Okay, if the patient refuses, you will not perform the procedure. Okay, so now after having discussed this, what are the sites from where do we perform the bone marrow aspiration as well as the biopsy? Okay, very, very important. Now, in adult patients, mainly in adult patients, in the current scenario, in adult patient, okay, the most common site is the posterior superior iliac spine over here. Okay, so you have to give a proper positioning to the patient. You have to ask the patient to fold the legs, flex the legs. One of the legs should be flexed and one of the legs should be extended such that, okay, from behind, you should palpate the iliac crest and then the point which is most visible or most palpable, that is the point from where you have to perform this particular procedure. Okay. Um, so, the iliac crest or the iliac spine is the most common site both for bone marrow aspiration as well as for the biopsy. The most frequently used site for both aspiration and biopsy in children who are more than one year of age as well as in adults. Okay. It is the posterior superior iliac spine. Always in your report, you have to write the site, okay, the right or the left posterior superior iliac spine. Now, what are the advantages? The site is, has a large reservoir of marrow and it is located just beneath the skin, okay. So, therefore, it is also easily accessible. Another thing, there are no large blood vessels or nerves which are close to this area. And as the patient's back is towards the physician, the patient's apprehension is also less. So, this is a safe site because major structures are not present near this. Okay, and also very important the, because the patient is not looking at this procedure, so the apprehension is very, very less. The second site that is the sternal aspiration. Now, it used to be done very frequently because it is a readily accessible site. But in today's world, okay, it is uh, not the first choice. Okay, if for example, a patient is very fat and you are not getting the posterior superior iliac spine, okay, that happens in rare cases. Out of 100 cases, if you perform maybe 2-3 cases, be like that. So, in that situation, you are going to aspirate from the sternum. That is what we are using at this point of time. So, previously, the sternum was commonly used for aspiration of the bone marrow in adults at the level of second intercostal space in the midline. However, it is associated with the risk of perforation of the posterior sternal plate and you might puncture the underlying large blood vessels. So, the large vessels, the aorta and the other subclavian vessels, Okay, uh, brachiocephalic vessels, so all the important major vessels are there, even the right it atrium might get punctured okay, with serious consequence. So, that is why this is not the first sight today. It also causes greatest patient anxiety because the patient can see that you are puncturing something in your sternum. So, that is why this causes a lot of apprehension in the patient. Okay, this site should not be used in children as the bone is thin and the marrow cavity is small. So, not suitable for children as well. Okay. Then the third important site over here is the spinous process of the lumbar vertebra. So, this is the vertebra and you can see the spinous process over here. So, this could be used for aspiration. So, this is an additional site of aspiration for adults. Okay. And tibia. Now, tibia is mainly used in infants who are less than one year of age. It is a very important site of aspiration. Okay. The marrow can be aspirated from the medial aspect of the upper end of the tibia just beneath the tibial tuberosity. So, this is the most common site and this is the site that should be used for children that is less than one year, okay, very accessible site for children, this is the tibia, okay. So, these are the four important sites, okay, of bone marrow aspiration and bone marrow biopsy. I hope this is very crystal clear to everyone. Now comes, what are the complications of aspiration and the biopsy procedure? So, as with any surgical procedure, because you are aspirating so Local infection, this complication which is more likely to occur in neutropenic patients can be prevented if strict aseptic precautions are observed, number one. Number two, hemorrhage. 
सीरियस हेमोरेज कैन ऑकर इफ द मैरो बायोप्सी इज डन विदाउट एडिक्वेट रिप्लेसमेंट कवर इन क्वागुलेशन डिसऑर्डर सो इफ यू हैव नॉट टेकन द प्रॉपर हिस्ट्री एंड द पेशेंट इज हैविंग अ क्वागुलेशन डिसऑर्डर द पेशेंट माइट स्टार्ट ब्लीडिंग इफ द पेशेंट प्लेटेड काउंट इज वेरी लेस अराउंड फाइव थाउजेंड टेन थाउजेंड द पेशेंट कैन स्टार्ट ब्लीडिंग एंड देन इट इज इट बिकम्स वेरी डिफिकल्ट then number 2 great vessels and heart is injured if sternal aspiration is done okay so if that can occur so so if you are doing a sternal puncture and if you puncture the great vessels and the heart again one problem can happen over there then cardiac tamponade or mediastinitis this is likely if the posterior sternal plate is penetrated during the sternal aspiration so all these points becomes very very important so these are the complications of aspiration and the biopsy procedure 